folks, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday, right? Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. Channel 211 becomes Dan Patrick Radio exclusively here on Sirius XM. Joining us now is Dan Patrick himself. Dan, good morning, man. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, I It's like cool jazz here. I feel like I have to lower my voice a little bit with that music. <laughs> No, you're fine, yeah. man. Congratulations. <laughs> do you like do you like do you like jazz? I appreciate jazz. I don't get jazz. I like I, I don't think I'm smart enough to understand jazz. Because I'll listen to, you know, Thelonious Monk or Coltrane or whatever, and then I'll go, Oh man, I don't know what I'm listening to. Really? So you what pro- about yeah, you I know. Pro- you you so, probably you probably should you probably just need to slow down a little bit. You know, jazz is a lot like sports. If you just slow down and appreciate it, everybody is is almost like really a basketball team because everybody has a certain role to play on the court doing their own improvisation. So it's maybe you think about it like that, it might make it a little bit better. I don't know. Well, what I love about jazz is that it is spontaneous and there mm-hmm. is sort of this freedom of all of a sudden if somebody does something, then somebody can then counter you know they they kind of add to it or they subtract or they stay out or they you know right, right so I, right. I like that i like the improvisational part of jazz i just i mean i've miles davis i've listened to many 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 times i but i, I don't know if i appreciate it the way i should <laughs> but there's still time you know there's i got still, i got a few, few yeah, years left yeah, i can figure this out but, there's definitely still time you can, you can still make it um so congratulations on the new channel thank you Thank you. Uh, Thank so you. Uh, how, I mean, you've been doing radio for a while, of course. You've been on television for a while. How, um, what's the significance of actually having a, a channel, though, on Sirius XM? Well, I wanted to have some people that I liked on a channel. Uh, Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk is a friend. Rich Eisen from the NFL Network is a friend. So you can put their shows on there. And then if you find other people that, you can give them a break, give them a chance to uh, to do radio. And I love radio. You, you can take TV, but I love radio. I, 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 did, I think it's the purest form of what we do, that if I say something, you can react to it, if you tweet, if you email, if you call. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that. If you're watching TV, you're watching CNN or Fox, you can't comment on what you're seeing or talk to the host. Uh, if you're reading a newspaper column, you can't you know, respond to them right away. I like the immediacy of, of what we do with radio. In, indeed. Um, just in the past couple of days, you've had some pretty uh, uh, interesting topics. I think I think you had, uh, didn't you have Kershaw on yesterday? Yes. Was you, yeah. What was that like? Well, we've had him on quite a few times. And so the challenge is, what can I get out of Clayton Kershaw that will not only entertain the Dodger fan, the local fan in Los Angeles, but then somebody nationally is going to care about Clayton Kershaw. And I wanted to ask him about, let's build the perfect pitcher. So, you know, who's fastball, who's breaking ball, who's change up. And just through his eyes of what he sees as far as greatness on the mound, so, you know, you're talking to him about a variety of things. He's been in the league 10 years. Uh, does he see himself as ever being a reliever uh, late in his career? And he said he, w- he wouldn't rule that out. So it's just sort of the approach is I can never be as local as the local broadcaster can. But can you take a local story and make it national? And that's usually the challenge every day. Uh, what about, you know, who's trending this morning on Twitter? Speaking of the Dodgers, it, it's not Kershaw, but. Kiki Hernandez, who ended up having it, yeah. ended up having it, in that something? <laughs> well, we're seeing a lot of positional players pitching now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's it, right. Know, it, it, I guess they don't have a choice. Yeah, so it's it's getting to this point where teams, I think, say, "All right, I don't think we have any chance to win this. Uh, let's let's bring in, hey, uh, hey, Tommy, come on, uh, can you want to pitch? You know, it's like <laughs> it's your dream to pitch when you were in little league. Like everybody wanted to pitch. Now you got these positional players that we're throwing in there and. You give up a home run in the 16th inning, and uh, you know Phillies ended up winning. Can, can I be selfish in, in the time remaining? I'm going to ask you about my two favorite teams. First all of all, right. the Yankees. Um, how do you think we're doing? We just got Zach Britton on yesterday. Um, I, I fear, though, with the way the Red Sox are rolling, we could win. Both the Red Sox and the Yankees can win 100 games, and one of us end up with a wild I think it would be the first wild card to win 100 games, maybe. When did you become a Yankee fan? Like, have you grown up Yankee yeah. fan? Yeah, always, my whole life. 
So I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a. As my son, my son's a teenager. They call that a hype beast. Somebody who just jumps on the bandwagon. Uh, I'm not a hype. Oh. I've been a Yankee fan since birth. Okay. <laughs> I, I love. I love what they did with Britain. You couldn't get starting pitching. So what they're doing is building that back end. Mm-hmm. And you know, but it's still going to come down to this. You're going to have a one game playoff. And is a one game playoff? Is that going to be more beneficial? You got to. You got to get to the Red Sox. So you have to win that one game. It looks like. And are you going to be better suited to go into a series with the Red Sox with more relievers than starters? And it's almost gotten to the point where you're seeing these teams go, if we get four, five innings out of our starter, we're good. The Yankees have used this approach before with having, you know, two great relievers, one setup and one closer. Now you've got three or four guys that mm-hmm. you can piece together. Um, and that might turn out to be really, really important against the Red Sox, but you got to get into that uh, that playoff. You got to win your one game playoff. But I, Britain is the Astros wanted him, the Cubs wanted him, and I think there's one other team that, that wanted him. So you keep him away from some of these other teams. Oh, the Red Sox wanted him too. So you're keeping him away yeah, yeah, from the teams you're going against, the Astros and the Red Sox. That's true. That's true. Second favorite team, Georgetown Hoyas. I know you talked to Patrick. Uh, since he's been on, I'm a I'm a Hoya. Went to Georgetown. I worked for Big John. I was one of his student managers. Um, how do you think Patrick's doing? Can he rebuild the Hoyas? Well, you got to win. You got to win the living room. So when Patrick goes in, and and this is what's hard for you know guys who have established themselves, or you know Patrick's had this Hall of Fame career. Now you got to get on the road, and you got to schlep out there, and you got to you know go into these these living rooms, and you got to sell Georgetown again. You know, John Thompson did this, and then after that, he didn't have to do this because you had those players who wanted to play for him. Patrick has to establish something in those living rooms where mom, dad says, that's where I want my son to go. Great education. Uh, you're the coach. You're the coach for my son. I love that he got a chance. It'd been a long time, and I'd been a proponent of, you know, why can't Patrick? You? I feel like there's heightism that goes on in the uh, NBA coaching ranks, like that maybe you can be too tall. Absolutely. And, and I always like, I don't know what it is, but I was like, why can't Patrick Ewing get a head coaching job here? Now you've had Kevin McHale and you've had Phil Jackson, but you know, your, your coaches right. usually aren't seven feet tall. Right. And I, I wanted Patrick to get a chance. I, I think the world of him, he's such a fun guy, great interview. And I, I got to know him as a person years ago through Mark Jackson, the former mm-hmm. NBA player. Mm-hmm. And so we've just rooted for him, and I, I hope he does well. And I, and I hope that he's able to take some of what Big John has told him and some of these other coaches he worked for and, uh, and put that into the program. It'd be great. No, we all acknowledge that heightism. It seems like you know guards have the advantage when it comes to coaching. But it's funny. I, I like what you said about winning the living room, Dan. I was in D.C. a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, they have in the, the, the Kenner League, Kenner Summer League, uh, the new freshman, Mac McClung, who's a, a human highlight film, was playing. So I text yeah. Patrick. I said, hey, man, you in town. Let's go to the game. And I was actually glad at his response. He said, no, Mark, I can't go to the game with you this weekend. I, I'm not in town. I'm recruiting. <laughs> so, Good. you know, here I was trying to distract him from work to hang out. But he's doing his job, and he's doing that work in the living room. So that's a that's a good thing. You know what, Mark? He's He's got to find another Patrick Ewing. Right, right, right. That's true. That, that's what that that's his goal. Hey, Patrick, here's the mission: find <laughs> another one of you. That would really help because I covered that Georgetown team. I worked at CNN at sure. the time in New York, sure. And I remember going down, and you know, I who was it? Bill Shaplin? Is that sound yes, right? Bill Shaplin. Yeah, Shap. Yeah, yeah, you remember? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So he was the PR guy. <laughs> And I thought Georgetown's defense was tough. I couldn't get through him to get to, you know, <laughs> coach or, or Pat. I mean, I, I, I did interview coach a few times when yeah. I went down there, but never any of the players. Yeah. And, you know, I asked Patrick, I said, why didn't you speak to the media? And he just said that, you know, they made a decision that they didn't want to do that. They, th- they, they wanted it to be us against them, and there was no reason to be friendly to the media. So yeah. interesting perspective there, but – uh, you know, Big John was that he was quite an intimidating guy. But, uh, you know, to be around that program, to see what they did, what they meant for college basketball, it's tough to restore that. But if Patrick can get them and make them relevant again, then I think that's, you know, will be one of the biggest accomplishments of his career. That's saying a lot. 
Um, so much more I could go down the road with you, man. I know we have a limited amount of time, but we want to encourage people. Channel uh, 211 uh, beginning tomorrow, Dan Patch Radio. So what's going to happen is, folks, you will hear, uh, in fact, the Dan Patrick uh, show uh, live 9 a.m. to noon Eastern. And then the West Coast replay, the West Coast audience will hear the West Coast replay at noon. Also on the channel, uh, uh, right, Dan, you got Pro Football Talk with Mike uh, Florio, uh, beginning uh, with Rich Eisen at 6 a.m. Eastern, as a matter of fact. Um, he'll also be on. So you got a great lineup, huh? Yeah, they're friends. It's fun. Um, you know, I, I hope people are comfortable listening. We're not a in your face, yell at you. Uh, you know, we don't have hot takes. We just we treat you with respect. And uh, hopefully that's something that people will, will enjoy. I, I, I got to do this. Is LeBron the best in the NBA? He, he is right now. Uh, overall in, 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 in history. No, no, Not but yet. that Not doesn't yet. mean we, we, we can't revisit this in five <laughs> to seven years, and then, then we might. See, I have to wait till it's over. Mike's over, Kobe's over, yeah, you know, yeah. anybody else you want to throw in there. LeBron is the one who's still, you know, if he wins a championship in L.A., it's, a different, it's something different that nobody else has done. But if, how about, if, you know, five years from now, Mark, we talk about it, then we can revisit this, and okay. then we can have okay. – like a legitimate discussion with it, because no matter what happens, and I saw all of those Jordan championships, I covered sure, them for sure. ESPN. Yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, it's hard for me to lose that image of if there was a game on the line, Mike was going to win it. I'm a big LeBron apologist. I don't know why I, I have to be an apologist for him, but I, I, I say to people, you're, you're just not appreciating what you're seeing now because we want to compare him to Michael and he won't win that comparison Years from now, we're going to be looking for the next LeBron, um, and it'll be hard to find the next LeBron just like it is the next Michael Jordan. But let's make a bet here. Let's make an agreement. Five years from now, we'll I'm going to study my jazz, and then <laughs> we can have this conversation about LeBron and Michael Jordan. Indeed, we will. Folks, Dan Patrick, Radio, you, Mark. Channel 211. Thanks, Dan. Talk soon, okay? All Congratulations right. on take the channel. Care. All right, take care Thank now. You. All right, bye-bye. 866-99-SERIOUS, uh, 866 Don't forget Dan Patrick Radio, Channel 211, beginning tomorrow here on Sirius XM.